And in continuation of Arise News special report, correspondent Ovia Teme George has an overview of environmental issues in the Niger Delta as calls heighten for the protection and preservation of the ecosystem. Nigeria exported its first crude oil from the Oloibiri oil field in February 1958, initially at a rate of 5,100 barrels per day. The lure of petrodollars relegated agriculture to the background as more discoveries were made in different locations of communities in the oil-rich Niger Delta and other parts of the country. Exploration for oil became trouble to the soil. So many decades after oil has been found here, this region has become one of the top 10 most polluted environments in the whole world. And the level of hydrocarbon pollution is at a scale that is virtually unimaginable except you see it. The nearest I have personally seen of anything close to this are the kinds of pollution that happened in Ecuador and Latin America, abandoned, left oil wells and spills left in the Amazon. And then the other one would be in South Sudan. The first major oil spill was recorded in Ogoniland in 1970. And ever since, there have been reported cases in some parts of Nigeria. According to the Nigerian government, there were more than 7,000 spills between 1970 and the year 2000. Today, the ecosystem, the environment, flora and fauna, and in fact, even the lives of peoples in the Niger Delta have been devastated. We found a situation that considerable resources have been taken out of the land and what the people get is 100% of pollution. The environment I grew up in, the creeks, the mangrove, the swamps um, where we feed from, um, from seafood and fish and all of that, none of those things exist um, anymore, which is, um, which is sad. And Nigeria and the oil companies are responsible. Ikarama is a community in Yenagoa local government area of Bayelsu State. The Taylor Creek runs through the community where fishing and farming are tightly woven to the culture and traditions of the people. Chief Ramos Egu is a native of a Karama II community. The former textile worker remembers how oil exploration began in the area. Shell came in first to this community in 1964, precisely, in Azumar family's land. Ajib came in 1983. Any time there is oil spill, sometimes the fault is from them, but they will always say it's sabotage, that is man-made. What they do is to invite one or two boys to an hotel elsewhere, then arrange with them, give them money, so that those brothers will come to speak with the, with the community. And where the community does not agree, initially we fall Mungu, not knowing that, that they have been sent by this shell. And on that process, there is always riot, crisis. The 58-year-old man tells the story of a family swamp impacted by oil spill in March this year. From the street to a narrow footpath, we walked a short distance through the forest and got to an area close to the spill-impacted swamp. Whenever oil spill occur, it SPDC that is benefiting. When they take the, then I then would give out the contract between themselves. And when they do the clean up sea, they know they will not do anything. Everything blind. They will just do blah blah come out. So now then they benefit from there. Then they get much money. A 2014 report by the United Nations Environment Programme reveals that it will take about 25 to 30 years to restore the environment in Ogoni land 
in a cleanup exercise expected to gulp about one billion dollars. We made a solemn commitment that if given the opportunity, we shall implement the UNEP report on Ogunila. We are determined to put right the wrongs of the past, where the people of this land were treated unfairly and the environment unduly degraded and polluted. We are therefore laying a solid foundation today for the restoration of the fragile ecosystem of Ogunia land and the rest of the Niger Delta. While that is yet to be done, a Dutch appeal court ruled on the 29th of January this year that the Royal Dutch Shell's Nigerian subsidiary is responsible for multiple oil pipeline leaks in the Niger Delta and ordered it to pay unspecified damages to four farmers in the country. The case was filed in 2008 by the farmers and environmental group Friends of the Earth. On the 12th of February, the United Kingdom Supreme Court allowed a group of 42,500 Nigerian farmers and fishermen to sue Royal Dutch Shell in English courts after years of oil spills, contaminated land and groundwater. They don't respect decisions of courts in Nigeria. And so these ones are significant because they care so much about what their home country, the courts in their home country say, what their shareholders hear directly from the media, and they don't care what happens here. So getting judgments here is one thing, and getting judgment in the home countries of the oil company is another thing. Most oil producing communities find the international oil companies culpable but incidents of third-party interference or sabotage cannot be completely ruled out. We are paid to keep oil in the pipelines, not to, not to spill it. Um, without meaning to trade blames, um, unfortunately, uh, the vast majority of spills we see in the Delta are on account of theft and sabotage. We need to do, we need to do something about that. We also need to make sure, indeed, that um, uh, we operate to the highest international standards, which is what we are there for as a company. And where uh, indeed this does happen, we are always committed to clean up uh, spills within our rights of way, whether it's been caused by us or not, and to engage the communities meaningfully. The theme for the 2021 World Environment Day is Ecosystem Restoration, a title that aptly nudges on the conscience of the international oil companies and the federal government to conduct a thorough cleanup and remediation work in the Karama, Koluama, Oruma, Ogoniland, and other environmentally impacted communities in Nigeria. Ovietime George, Arise News.